All the major news stories made simple and easy for your listening pleasure. We'll break it down for you in key words for the segment. We're joined by Adam. Good morning. Hello, Lena. Not too long ago, I remember having that very conversation with you. Cleaning mm-hmm. out the closet, nothing yeah. to wear. Remember? Yeah. Has that remained the same? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's changed. It's really funny because hey. I feel like this trend, go minimalist, has been yeah. kind of the go-to for a few years. But yeah. clearly, we love the idea. But adapting is something different. Yeah, there's a lot of clutter in my house. <laughs> it's really, really bad. I mean, I've got no one to blame but myself, I yeah. know. But uh, yeah, I'll get to it. Are you sure about yeah, that? Yeah, soon. Okay, so I'm going to ask yeah. you in the new year if you've done that. Yeah. Especially winter as well, because yeah. your clothes get thicker and uh, right. larger. It seems a bit more cluttered than usual as well. I do wonder if that's a fair argument to be made. I realize I don't have a whole lot of clothes anymore. I did yeah. declutter several yeah. times when yeah. I moved mm-hmm. at, in the last two years. But I realize my coats and jackets and the puffy ones, yeah. it, it just takes up a lot of space. I know, but what can you do? you got to stay warm. Uh, yeah, nothing <laughs> but, you can do. But I guess it invites a question. How many of those puffy jackets do you really need? Do you know what? I, I wear less than half of what I actually own regularly. See? So, yeah, it is a bit of a waste, I know. Of space. Because of space, space is yeah. what we're trying to seek after, especially yeah. in a city like Seoul. Yeah, I'm thinking about uh, donating a lot of, uh, probably more than half of my clothes i'm gonna hold you accountable yeah because you know in the (laughs) (laughs) anyway yeah i'll get to it i'll let you know when it happens (laughs) i didn't mean to put you on the spot but i I guess we share the sentiment Um, the minimalist lifestyle is something that you're seeking and if you've been successful at adapting it please do share what Mm -hmm. was your way (laughs) time for us to turn our attention to keyword news as always we're going to clarify some of these major headlines for you this morning starting with our covid19 coverage this is is our first keyword of the day. Cases still rising. So Korea's new coronavirus cases were below 6,000 for the past two days, but it does look like cases will rise again. It mm-hmm. usually does happen midweek, doesn't it? So yeah. what's the latest? Yeah, it does happen. It's Wednesday. It's a hump day. It yeah. is uh, exactly midweek. So uh, as of 9 p.m. yesterday, cases were tallied at about 6,500. Uh, that's more than 2,200 recorded during the same time frame the previous mm-hmm. day. So uh, midnight to 9 p.m. the previous day. And it's also 646 more cases than the same time reported last Wednesday. Mm. Uh, The rise, of course, uh, as you said, is attributed to more tests with cases usually uh, lower earlier in the week and then picking up from midweek. That's usually been the case. Sure. Uh, At this rate, the caseload is expected to surpass 7,000 again today when all the cases are counted until midnight. Uh, Critical cases are also still hovering in and out of the Mm 1,000 range. Mm. Uh, Infections are still concentrated in the capital area. It counts for nearly 73%, two-thirds of all the cases that have been reported. Mm. Uh, And this fourth wave of the pandemic uh, has been going on for more than five months now. We Mm. are still in the midst of a fourth wave wave. Mm. Uh, uh, We've had a lot of measures uh, altered between that time, but we are still in this fourth wave. And the Omicron variant is also spreading fast as well. There's two more cluster infections that have been reported. They occurred at a kindergarten in Iksan, North Chala province, as well as a public institute Mm. in Gwangju. Health officials are particularly concerned about this outbreak in Iksan, as more than 20 kids and family members have been or are suspected to have been infected with Omicron. Mm. And there are concerns that more cases tied to this kindergarten are likely to uh, happen and contact tracing is Mm. underway. There are now 227 Omicron cases nationwide. That's a 45-fold increase since the first five were confirmed about 20 days ago. And that very rate of the spread of the Omicron variant is significantly faster than the Mm. Delta variant, which is a point of concern, is it not? It's transmissible. And we leave it there for now. Moving on to our second keyword of the day. Business Support Fund. Uh, The rapid surge in cases has forced the government to bring back tough virus curbing measures, which will, of course, damage small businesses. That's Mm -hmm. where the complaints have been very vocally, I I, I think, Mm -hmm. issued. The government is providing financial support to them from the 27th, so they're trying to act with a rather sense uh, sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, One million won in cash will be given to 3.2 million uh, small business owners each. Uh, That's just a lump sum. That's regardless 
regardless of the size of the sales or the level of quarantine uh, measures that affected the businesses that huh? affected the business okay. uh, so uh, if you are part of this 3.2 then uh, if you even have an increase in sales you mm. will get this 1 million one in cash but mm. that's probably unlikely uh, uh, that you have lost the sales but uh, mm. increased sales rather uh, this is part of 4.3 uh, trillion one uh, in sub sorry that's 3.4 it should be in subsidy set aside for uh, mm. support for these small business owners uh, suffering from these social distancing rules. Uh, but the money will go out in phases. Uh, those that are subject to shortened opening hours will get their assistance from next Monday. So mm. those who are in most desperate need of it. Uh, after that, starting January, assistance will be given uh, to businesses that are not subject to restricted operating hours but still have uh, seen a drop in sales. And that means more business types are added to this list of recipients. Uh, and the government will also provide up to 100,000 won to reduce the burden of quarantine supplies from the 29th as well. Uh, so if owners prove that they have purchased terminals and thermometers, they will be paid up to 100,000 won. Mm. Um, Post-damage compensation for the losses in sales and revenue in the fourth quarter will be given out starting mid-February. That covers 45 days in total. That's excluding the time when the country had lifted restrictions, so this living with COVID-19 mm -hmm. scheme. Mm -hmm. Uh, the minimum amount of money has also increased from the previous 100,000 uh, won to 500,000 won. Uh, yeah, so there mm. has been an increase and an expansion of these support measures, but mm. uh, these small business owners are still not happy. Uh, it's, I mean, it's some help, but is mm. it enough mm. is a pretty tricky and slippery question. And yeah. it seems that small business owners are saying, no, mm. it's insufficient, even with the increase. Yeah, That's a back and forth for the time being. Mm -hmm. Moving on to our third keyword of the day. Radioactive water concerns. So the operator of Japan's crippled Fukushima nuclear power plant has filed for approval for its plan to release treated radioactive water into the sea. Uh, of course, this has drawn backlash from Korea, frankly mm -hmm. speaking, any countries that may possibly affect it, which mm -hmm. is the global community, if you ask me. But yeah. what's the latest on this front? Yeah, especially those uh, backlashes coming from Korea, China, and also these neighboring right. countries as well. Right. Uh, Seoul held an emergency vice ministerial meeting after Tokyo Electric Power submitted the application to Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority. Uh, the operator wants to construct an undersea tunnel and other facilities needed for the planned wastewater release and it hopes to obtain approval from the uh, NRA to begin constructing the facilities in June and start releasing the water in April 2023. Uh, the Korean government expressed serious concerns over Japan's proceeding with its plan to unilaterally release the contaminated water uh, despite Seoul's repeated opposition. Um, the government said it will convey such a stance to Japan through uh, various diplomatic channels mm. and it also criticized Tokyo for not providing sufficient explanation over the planned release. This is despite, uh, despite repeated letters sent by Seoul requesting such information. Mm. Uh, Korea's nuclear watchdog has also sent a letter to Japan's NRA calling for uh, an independent mm. and transparent review. Um, but the Japanese government and TEPCO maintain that the planned release of radioactive water into the sea would have a very minimal impact on the marine environment and humans. So it seems that they're very adamant on releasing sticking uh, to their plan. This water, yeah. Uh, the last time we had this uh, discussion on the program as to why they have to release these mm -hmm. treated radioactive water, it's just their infrastructures don't hold up anymore. And it's just mm. way too costly, and yeah. they're trying to convince all neighboring countries or all those that are concerned that it is safe, but. Mm. How do you define safe and who mm. gets to make that call is still coming to question. Yeah, there's. A, I don't want to get into the science of it, but Japan right. have uh, appealed on a certain uh, isotopes that are not as harmful and reducing right. ones that could be to right. levels that are safe uh, if they are released into uh, the ocean. Shared course, ocean. Yeah, but of course, uh, that's not really flying with uh, Korea or these neighboring countries that have expressed uh, concern. All right, on to our fourth keyword of the day. Staying in Korea. So the government has released data on immigrants to Korea and their immigration employment status. And it shows that as of May this year, the number of foreign residents was similar from last year at just over 1.3 million. The data also shows that a lot of the foreign residents want to stay in Korea long mm. term, I'm assuming. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about the details of the report. Yeah, data from Statistics Korea shows that 88.2% of foreign nationals in Korea without the uh, permanent residency visa F5 want to extend their 
their stay. Uh, so that's basically uh, nearly nine out of ten. Yeah. That was uh, as of May and is up 1.7 percent from the previous year. Uh, more than half of them wanted to stay by extending their current visas. Uh, 14.6 wanted to acquire permanent residency, so that F5 visa. Uh, 11% wanted to actually become Korean citizens as well, acquire Korean nationality. Mm. Uh, meanwhile, the number of employed foreign nationals was just over 855,000, up uh, about 7,000 from a year ago. Uh, this actually marks the first increase since 2018. Uh, mm. um, this year's increase, but is attributable to a rebound in the overall number of workers in the country due to a partial recovery in the labour market from last year's kind of rapid job losses mm. from the pandemic. Mm. So it's kind of a universal uh, trend. Uh, the construction industry added the most jobs for foreign nationals. 17,000 new positions were added, actually. That's up uh, nearly 19% from a year ago. Uh, the manufacturing industry, however, lost about 9,000 jobs. That's uh, down about 2.5% from a year earlier. Um, and the data also show that more than half of foreign residents were either very satisfied or somewhat satisfied with their work. So it seems that Korea is treating them well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Or they've, they've just, you know, they've... Yeah. I think humans are habitual creatures and when right. we adjust to a certain uh, region, uh, yeah. we, we, we connect with certain people, mm. we might want to stick to the status quo a little bit longer. I mean, yeah. Arirang has kept me for 10 years. Yeah. I mean, look at me. I'm a, a foreign national. Te- <laughs> well, Technically yeah. you are. Yeah, huh? a foreign national uh, yeah. residing in Korea and I've been more than here more than 10 years as well. <laughs> so there you go. There you go. <laughs> Living proof. Yeah. <laughs> All right. On to our fifth keyword of the day. Canadian beef imports halted. So Canada has reported its first case of atypical mad cow disease in nearly six years in Alberta. Canadian authorities say the disease poses no risk to human health and is not transmissible. But the Korean government is taking precautionary Mm. measures. So what measures are currently in place? Yes, well, the distribution of beef imports from Alberta have been suspended. And the Agriculture Ministry said that the move effectively banning imports went into effect four days after Canada confirmed the BS. Case. Now, the PSE case is atypical, which is less risky than uh, typical mm. cases as it doesn't spread to other cows. So that's probably what they're meaning, uh, the Canadian authorities meaning when they say that it poses no risk to human uh, health and mm. is not transmissible. Mm. Uh, but some uh, 41 tons of Canadian beef has been imported but uh, has yet to be distributed, so it's uh, staying in a freezer somewhere. Uh, Canadian beef accounts for actually about 2.6% of total beef imports, and the ministry has requested the Canadian government to provide related information on the latest case, mm. and it will use that information to decide whether to resume quarantine expe- uh, inspections as well going forward. But uh, at the moment, it seems that there's no great risk to it. But, uh, Mm. of course, it's better to be safe than sorry. And so they're going to review that data Mm -hmm. and make the decision accordingly. And on to our last keyword of the day. Weapon development. So the CIA says North Korea continues to develop various weapons and missiles which could cause concern among the international community. This is according to the latest paper. Run us through the details. Yeah, the CIA's latest factbook uh, notes were reported by the Voice of America. In them, the CIA claims North Korea continues to develop a variety of missiles from uh, submarine launch ballistic missiles to intercontinental uh, ballistic missiles. And it notes the regime has had advanced ballistic missiles since 20. 19. Uh, and of course, this is the era when a lot mm. of peace talks are happening as right, well right. between um, uh, Trump and Kim Jong un and Moon Jae in as well. Uh, the report also stated what it called Pyongyang's excessive spending on nuclear development and weapons tests. And it's estimated to be about 20 to 30 percent of the total GDP. Uh, This, it said, led to severe economic difficulties for the regime. And the CIA labelled North Korea as one of the poorest countries in Asia Mm. uh, as well. One possible reason, the CIA noted, was that leader Kim Jong-un has insisted on the idea of self-reliance, despite admitting the failures of his own economic policies. And of course... They don't really have much choice but to be self-reliant because of all these international sanctions uh, mm-hmm. that are placed mm-hmm. on the regime. All right. So it seems as the report places a lot of blame on the regime's leadership. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you very much, Adam, for today's discussion. You're I'll welcome. speak to you again tomorrow. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. 
See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.